Hi, I'm Dr. Fran Macko, and I'm a Professional Development Coordinator with Cicero Systems. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the bane of every social studies and history teacher, and that is academic vocabulary. We know as teachers of social studies and history that one of the biggest stumbling blocks our students face when they read in history are those concept words and academic vocabulary federalism, socialism, constitutionalism, um, those huge, huge words that are so integral to understanding history, but are very complex and not easily defined. And concepts and academic vocabulary are so intertwined that students need to really have some good strategies to be able to figure out language that otherwise would be an impediment to them in terms of reading. And for those of you who are Common Core states, one of the Common Core state standards for content literacy is identifying and defining key terms. So one of the things students are going to be asked to do in the Common Core and what we want them to be able to do each day in our classroom is to be able to identify and define, and I don't mean by define, copy a definition, really internalize meaning so that they can apply it and really have a broad and deep understanding of concept words in history. Now we know that academic vocabulary is critical. It's a critical component of prior knowledge or background knowledge. If students understand terms, if the student has a good handle on the idea of federalism that they've developed when you've done the federal period post-American uh, Revolution, you know that they can then use that understanding of that term as we move forward in history and examine federalism in its various forms throughout history. So it's essential for building prior knowledge, and it's obviously essential for making meaning. And we know that the more academic vocabulary that students can master, the better understanding they'll have, and the easier it will be for them to learn new information. The issue for teachers is that there's often so much academic vocabulary that students need to master. So how do we approach this as a teacher? I've seen examples where students are copying definitions of 20 or 30 words that are really critical. But we also know from the research that there are only a certain number of words that any individual can remember in any given day. And that number is remarkably small. It may be five or six, perhaps. So one of the things we need to think about as teachers when we teach academic vocabulary is the idea that not all words are equal in importance. As much as we want our students to master all academic vocabulary for a particular piece of content, we have to make some decisions. Some are critically important. For example, democracy. That's not an academic vocabulary word that we can put aside that is critical to understanding U.S. history, world history. Okay. Some are useful but not critical, so they might help students, but if students did not master all of them, it would not necessarily be an impediment. And some are interesting but not necessarily useful. So in terms of what we are going to explicitly teach our students and how we explicitly teach them, really is a personal decision where teachers need to think about what vocabulary is critical and what are those words and concept words that my students will need to know and fully understand. And by fully understand, I mean more than just memorizing a definition to be effective readers and thinkers in history. And there are a number of different, well actually there are four categories of vocabulary in history. There are the ones, the words that are associated with instructional or directional tools, words like north and south, latitude, longitude. And these are fairly easy to teach because you can see them. You can demonstrate on a map 
what north is, what south is, what east and west. Okay. Things like longitude, latitude, words like below the equator or above the equator. There were concrete terms, things like the Stamp Act, where again, you could provide a very brief synopsis of the Stamp Act where students would have an understanding of that particular academic vocabulary. Okay. There are functional terms, things like sequencing, chronology, that help students cause and effect, help students understand how history is organized and how ideas and events and individuals in history are connected. I think one of the biggest challenges the students face is that they often think that history is compartmentalized. Read chapter one, and that part of history is done. They don't recognize often that history is not only sequential, but that the impact of earlier events on subsequent events, legacies of individuals, the echoes later in history of earlier. Okay? Uh, the fact that the Civil War was not perhaps the first example of the United States being on opposing sides. You can go back to the American Revolution. We were not a country. We were colonies. But again, you had patriots and loyalists, those echoes in history. And that's where the functional terms come in. And the biggest category and the most challenging one are those conceptual terms. Democracy, federalism, uh, communism, socialism, whether you teach U.S. or global history. And the idea that these are the terms that students really need to have a firm grasp on because those are the ones that are going to be in, not only integrated into a particular unit of study, they are the ones that f form the basis for essential questions in history, and they are the ones that will echo throughout history. So as I use for an example, democracy, an understanding of democracy not only democracy in its earliest forms in U.S. history, the challenges to democracy, what democracy looks like, what it is, an example, what it isn't, the non-example, democracy in the world, and non-examples of democracy. And one effective way often to teach those big conceptual terms is not by giving students a definition to memorize, but helping them generate and integrate their own definitions based on comparing examples and non-examples. Okay. So I believe academic vocabulary is one of the biggest challenges all teachers of social studies and history face. And part of helping students meet the Common Core state standards, if indeed your state has adopted them, or just supporting students in becoming better readers so as Teachers, we don't face the frustration of students looking at a piece of text and not being able to read it and, more importantly, comprehend it and then be able to analyze it is having, helping them understand how to develop concept understanding and how to build academic vocabulary. And in that process, making choices as teachers about what vocabulary is critical to teach and what can be taught or not taught. Cicero Systems offers professional development in building concept understanding and academic vocabulary, as well as a number of other strategies for building con content literacy. If you'd like more information, check out our website at www.cicerosystems.com.